morning. Uh, this is Professor Ramananda Hedges, Department of Mechanical Engineering, Maharaja Institute of Technology, with the CET code of 158. Uh, today, uh, I am here to introduce you to the laboratory mechanical measurements and metrology laboratory with the subject code of 18 MEL 37B slash 47B because it comes under the third semester of fourth semester with the credits exam credits of 2. So let, let us uh, before entering into any of the laboratory course or theory course we should know or justify the title as the title is mechanical measurements and metrology so once you know what is mechanical, what is measurements and what is uh, metrology because we are familiar with the word laboratory. So mechanical, uh, basically we have studied in your uh, primary or maybe in your uh, pre-university concepts of physics where we deal with different phenomena of maybe force, uh, pressure, energy, torque, power, okay? these are all the natural phenomena which are usually existing. The term mechanical comes into picture where I start where I start to apply that in the machineries or components or maybe measuring aspects or in terms of gauges. So the word mechanical comes into picture where I am studying those energy, force, power, torque, maybe linear or angular type of measurements with the help of these devices uh, in, the, in the field of mechanical engineering. That is the main purpose of the word mechanical. We are restricting ourselves to the study of instruments or gauges or devices or machineries in the field of mechanical engineering. So second thing is measurements. Measurement generally is nothing but it is a, a phenomenon of uh, maybe if it is linear we measure lines with the help of a scale as simple as that or with the help of measuring tape. So we want to measure length, we don't know the length of an unknown component, we measure it using a known standard. So that is the procedure of measurement. Measuring the unknown with the help of a known standard. The entire phenomena involved in measuring the unknown quantity or phenomena with the help of a known standard is called as measurement. Or simply if it is a quantity, maybe time, temperature, force, energy, pressure, any aspects, any scientific phenomena. If I, I am able, I am able to quantify it with the help of a number, which is called as a magnitude. Quantification of a phenomena, say force is 10 newton. The gravitational pull by the earth is 9.88 meter per second square. I measure acceleration due to gravity. If certain angle of a tapered or conical specimen is say 20 degrees, I am measuring angular, the angle. So like that, quantifying a phenomena, maybe angle, maybe temperature, maybe time or maybe energy, force, torque, pressure. So all these measuring aspects, knowing the or measuring the unknown quantity with the help of the standard measuring instrument is called as measurement. Okay. The second term now somehow we are familiar is now. The third term is metrology. So it is nothing but it is a science of pure measurement. We already know what is measurement. So measuring an unknown quantity with the help of unknown standard. So what are the devices or gauges or instruments which are available to measure phenomena which occur frequently in mechanical engineering. So this is how we collectively understand the laboratory. So this is all the laboratory is involved with. Okay. So instruments which are okay, purely used for science of measurement and measurement you already know knowing the unknown quantity with the help of a standard and they are related more to the mechanical engineering branch. So this is the comprehensive knowledge of okay, mechanical measurements and methodology laboratory. So this gives you a brief picture of what this laboratory deals with. So we will continue to get introduced to topic more and more okay, with a small glimpse. So today's my presentation will be okay, continuing of the following elements. Overview of the lab, syllabus and uh, introduction, followed by a course overview, objectives and outcomes. So, exam pattern, scheme of evaluation. So, coming to the first one, overview of the lab, syllabus and uh, introduction. So, in this lab, you can see here the first uh, phase of the presentation. 
lab contents. The entire lab battery is divided into two parts, part A and part B. So part A is more of mechanical measurements and part B is of consists of experiments which are giving us the knowledge based on methodology. So we will see part A mechanical measurements. I have already mentioned in my previous few minutes of session where measurement is an act of measuring the unknown magnitude with the help of a known standard. Okay? So we will get introduced to various instruments which are called as standards so that I can measure their relative okay, design quantity to which they are designed to measure. Okay. So first important term to be known here is okay, we focus something on calibration. That is why I have made a bold note of the word calibration. Calibration is nothing but okay, proven which can be authenticated. Okay, it is a standard. I am giving assurance that is an act of calibration. So that means to say if I calibrate an instrument, that means to say instrument is usually doubted for the authenticity or justifiable reading. That is why I will calibrate an instrument. If I calibrate a quantity, that means to say that quantity is usually not being measured appropriately. So I am putting more effort so that the quantity should be measured with the very least error or precisely. So that is what is an act of calibration, proven or on which I can rely as an engineer. Okay. So based on that we have four experiments here in part A, calibration of pressure gauge, calibration of LVDT, calibration of load cell, calibration of thermocouple. So each instrument they are designed for a particular physical phenomenon. Say pressure gauge, we will get detailed introduction in when we enter into lab wise, experiment wise, one by one. I will just brief on, on what phenomena experiments are based on. So pressure gauge is based on measurement of pressure. Okay, so we, we, you know that it is force exerted on per meter square or per centimeter square of unit area. So that force I can calibrate by using okay, one known standard and one okay, measuring instrument. Okay, say if there are two instruments which both are measuring the pressure, I can calibrate keeping one as the standard and one as the not so standard. I can give an input of mine so that. Okay, the instrument which is which I am going to measure whether it is giving or measuring the pressure correctly or not. So that you can understand by okay, undergoing this experiment of calibration of pressure gauge. Similarly, calibration of LVDT stands for linear variable differential transformer. So here we are going to measure linear displacement. Okay, linear displacement. So with the help of load cell, usually Okay, with the help of load cell, I am measuring again something related to your okay, linear measurements devices. Thermocouple, okay, thermocouple is also used to measure temperature. So it is a temperature measuring device. So we will see in detail how, the, how can we calibrate a thermocouple. Okay, basically these are used for linear and temperature okay, and displacement measuring devices. Fifth experiment is for determination of E stands for Young's modulus. Young's modulus of MS stands for mild steel specimen using strain gauges. So strain gauge is the instrument here which is a measuring instrument. So usually I cannot measure the compressive force directly from an object which is under the okay, subjected to compressive load. So uh, I should know the value of E that is Young's modulus because that gives me the load bearing capacity of any material. Okay. So here it is mild steel. How, so how do we measure the load bearing capacity of okay, mild steel? Because as an engineer I want to design a component so that it sustains under a working condition where it is subjected to a particular amount of load so that the material lasts long or its durability is undisturbed. Its endurance is not touched, it is untouched so that it performs better during the operation. That makes me to determine Young's minus value that too with the help of strain gauge as an instrument. So we will get a detailed uh, subjective knowledge when we enter into the experiment. So part A majorly focuses on different uh, phenomena of maybe okay, pressure, strain, temperature, EMF and linear displacement measuring the aspects of different quantities like linear okay, as well as temperature measurements. Okay. 
So part B is all about metrology. It is a science of pure measurements. Okay, I have already mentioned that in the previous few minutes. So here you can see various set of experiments. Say first experiment is use okay, angular measurement. These two are based on angular measurement by using sine bar and sine center. I okay, think that I have a component. It may be having a wedge shape. Maybe a shape of trapezium or maybe a conical object. If it is a cone. Okay, on a two dimension I can easily, on a sheet of paper, if I draw a okay, triangle, I can measure the angle with the help of a okay, protractor. Okay, so if it is a three dimensional object, how do I measure the angle of a cone? Very tough job for an engineer. Okay, conical objects like a hopper or maybe okay, the different components which are chimneys or maybe a water which has a conical shape or wedge shape. So there, okay, there is something called as a sine bar and sine center with the help of slip gauge as a gauging instruments which help us as a secondary standard to measure the angles of various components. Okay, next is okay, one calibration experiment which we missed in the previous sec section was calibration of micrometer. You might have introduced in your free university college about the micrometer where I am measuring the linear displacement with the help of micrometer. Main scale, okay, where we are scale, okay, uh, you have seen all those things, least count, so we will get introduced later on. Next is gear measurement, okay, there are in the mechanical engineering we use uh, generally the gears as the okay, transformers or the usually the prime movers where I transmit motion from one place to another place. So, gears, length of the, okay, maybe the gear angle or the length of the teeth, sorry, the gear teeth specification I have to measure with the help of gear tooth vernier calibers. Okay, that is what I written here GTVC stands for gear tooth vernier caliper. I measure the addendum or dedendum or maybe flank angle, crest root. Okay, whatever possibilities are there with the help of vernier caliper, I am going to measure it. Next comes the profile projector. So this is an instrument where I measure the screw and thread. Okay, specifications. It will be width of the thread or thread angle. Okay, it will be length of the thread related to threads. Similarly, for screw, it will be screw angle or the length of the screw. So, following specifications can be measured for screw and threads with the help of concept of interference of light. Okay, basically, they are designed all are designed on the concepts of physics. Next, followed by the experiment pathometer, where I can measure the surface profile, whether the surface is flat, surface is irregular or regular or smoother so that okay, I can get the input about the surface okay, texture or the feel in terms of microns, micro level. Next is auto collimator, okay, auto collimator and finally you have dynamometers. So these are all the instruments which can measure the, okay, auto collimator can measure the angle of, okay, the surface which is inclined angle, that is what we say. If there is a surface which is 90 degree to you, if it is tilted to a small angle, that angle can be measured with the help of concept of light. Again, in reference of light concept comes here. Auto collimator, it uses the optics, ray optics concept. So next is lay tool and build tool dynamometer. These are employed to measure the power thrust okay, and torque of okay, usually the lathe machine and drilling machine. Okay. So what is the output power output torque? give the uh, work operation in terms of drilling and lathe operation that I can measure using dynamometers. Next is floating carriage which is used for thread measurements. Similar to a profile projector, I can measure the length of the thread, okay, minor, the dia, major, dia, effective diameter of the thread I can measure with the help of floating carriage. And last one is a demonstration experiment where I am using optical flats to demonstrate the surface measuring criteria. Okay. So these are all the major level of the spider, 16 experiments which are uh, included in, uh, in the syllabus of okay, mechanical measurements and metrology uh, in the okay, our department of mechanical engineering, Maharaj Institute of Technology, Mysore, under the University, okay, Vishweshwarya okay, Technological University meeting. So objectives of a student is already clear to you because before entering into subject, he should be okay, prepared for a few things, but he will not be knowing what is the subject okay, is giving him off. 
So he will, okay, he will be introduced to the concepts of pressure, force, torque, power, angular measurement, linear measurement, okay, some gears or thread forms. So all these will be okay, imbibed in the student in the form of knowledge. Okay. Uh, what is the outcome finally? Because all, when objectives are fixed, obviously there will be outcome once the student or the inductee enters and finishes the course. So course outcomes are followed respectively. You can see here, understand the calibration procedure, measurement principles for various measuring instruments are gained. This is the first outcome. A pupil or a student or an engineering okay, graduate will be a UG student will be okay, capable of understanding what is calibration and how to do the carry out the procedure and how to apply the measurement principles so that he can calibrate an instrument or use the gauges. So that is the first problem. Second problem is assess various parameters with the components given and he can inspect using measuring instruments and gauges. It is somehow complementary to the previous topic. He will be able to assess means to say you can quantify in terms of number and say and comment on the instrument or gauges so that he will be able to inspect an instrument give this output okay next is analyze and interpret the results to draw value conclusion to standard procedures so there are various terminologies here okay we will be able to analyze if you understand this that would be more than sufficient that means to say deeper insight or detailed understanding of the Okay, concept will give him to conclude properly with the help of a standard procedure. Okay, that makes him to get the comprehensive knowledge of measuring instruments, whatever we have mentioned in part A and part B. Okay, so this, these are the three okay, major outcomes or outcomes what a pupil or a graduate UG student can uh, gain after undergoing the mechanical measurements and methodology lab as the course. So finally, the first exam pattern or scheme of examination you can see here. It is one question from part A for 30 marks, one question from part B for 50 marks, so 50 marks. Finally, the viva will be conducted for 20 marks and total summation comes around 100 marks. So uh, people should undergo this lab already. Uh, that, that gives him a very greater knowledge and impact as the basis and uh, okay, understanding the fundamentals of mechanical engineering with respect to instruments, measurements, okay, and uh, calibration procedures. Thank you. Hello, good afternoon. So now I am here to present to you the demonstration of uh, the first experiment in uh, mechanical measurements in metrology laboratory. Uh, part A related to mechanical measurements, it is uh, calibration of pressure gauge. Previously, I have mentioned you what is calibration. So, it is nothing but proven or authentic okay, reading or measurements or valid conclusion what we get from a standard testing procedure. So, here I will demonstrate to you so how to measure the pressure. Okay, with the help of two instruments, you can see uh, there is a dial gauge as well as the pressure gauge digital output measuring device so there is a okay, there are weights here you can see so you know, for application of pressure i need few weights so this is a 2 kg of weight okay and followed by 1 kg of weight so what we are using to demonstrate two calculations of experiments okay so this entire setup is filled with oil here you can see the oil point the engine oil okay will fill, fill with the hydraulic plunger with the oil and this is the place or platform for applying the load and this is the dial gauge which will show the applied pressure with the help of the knob if i rotate this knob clockwise that means to show the application of the load for the counterweight placed on the okay platform here if i tilt it anti clockwise and removing the application of the load with the help of hydraulic oil. So I am applying the pressure with respect to hydraulic oil here so that the weight gets displaced from the platform. Okay, I will demonstrate the experiment then we will get to know okay, how the hydraulic pressure is, okay, applied pressure is 
okay, usually calibrated that is what we are going to see here okay by using the weights okay, this is the electronic setup of okay calibrating the pressure cell so where we can see a zero knob is there which will assist me in calibrating the device for measuring the zero reading okay initially we have to balance the because there are both instruments here there is a dial gauge there is a pressure gauge i have to manage the reading so that both are different instruments they give same readings prior to the measuring device okay there should not be any deflection in the readings so make it zero with the help of zero knob okay you can see the reading zero followed by zero okay with the help of a standard weight being placed on the plunger okay that setup need to be made prior to the starting of the experiment okay uh, now we can try with okay one of the weight okay so we will try with the maximum weight of around 2 kg okay take weight of 2 kg place it appropriately on the okay, load platform see that okay the condition is unloaded okay the hydraulic oil is free from load okay place it on the platform firmly okay so that it is not disturbed okay because of the application of hydraulic pressure it should be undisturbed it shouldn't slip away so that the oil will get spilled off later on otherwise okay so once you place the weight with the help of the knob clockwise rotation there will be application of hydraulic pressure so that this load gets displaced from its okay the load platform okay you can see here i will just give a clockwise rotation to the knob and uh, your duty is to just go through the pressure gauge as well as the okay calibration display reading here both keeps on deflecting they both starts giving to change in reading or measuring the pressure so turn this knob clockwise till okay the platform gets displaced once the small indication of displacement is found here okay you should stop giving the rotations you can see the deflection of dial gauge is 1 kg per centimeter square here each division is okay around 0.2 kg per centimeter square in the dial gauge okay here it is showing 1.5 there also nearer to 1.6 okay so i am giving further rotation so it is crossing 2 kg per centimeter square dial gauge pressure so here it is 2 to 0.1 okay so just closely observe the load platform once the displacement starts okay now it is the your duty to okay see the displaced okay this is a reading here of the pressure gauge so that it stops at 2 okay so now uh, once the displacement has occurred the application of pressure has lifted the okay uh, the weight of 2 kg i have stopped the okay the loading addition of the hydraulic oil with respect to hydraulic oil now we just measure the reading here so i have already told you this each reading is 0.2 kg per centimeter square you can see here it is around 2.4 after 2 it is around two divisions ahead of 2 that means to say it is 2.2 2.4 kg per centimeter square and in the pressure cell display it is showing around 2.2 Okay, just make a note of this reading. So if this is okay, PG gauge pressure, it is 2.4. Load P. Okay, we are taking load as P. So this is PC, which is showing the calibration cell as 2.2. So this is the first set of reading for a kg weight of 2 kg. PG load are okay with the gauge pressure is 2.4, and load which is displayed in the of calibration is 2.2. Okay. Further, okay, I have to unload it because it is already the system is under hydraulic pressure. I will give anti-clockwise rotation. Okay. Give the anti-clockwise rotation so that we are removing the hydraulic pressure now for the further addition of weight. Okay. Once the knob undergoes steam, that means to say you are completely removing hydraulic pressure. Okay. Again, add one more weight of one kg. Okay, successfully. That means to say, two plus one. Now we are loading the system under three kg of pressure. Okay, so I have loaded firmly. See that it is firm. It shouldn't get slipped. Okay, see that it is firm on the load platform. 
follow the same procedure what we followed prior. Just keep on giving clockwise rotation with the knob so that hydraulic pressure is applied and the load gets lifted till, till the point of load gets displaced from the platform. Okay. <clears throat> and see that both are zero. Okay, and the unloading condition, both the readings are zero. So now I am applying the load. So you can see there is change in the deflector of gauge pressure. So it is showing one. Here it is 1.1. So you can see here it is showing 2 kg of weight. So once it, the load approaches the okay, whatever load you have applied, go with us okay, the lower pace so that the deflection can be counterbalanced. So now it is we are reaching 3 kg of weight here, it is showing 2.8. So now we have crossed the 3 kg, closely observed for a smaller displacement of weight. See now it is displaced, okay. Yeah. So now you can see, okay, well for a smaller displacement of weight I have uh, cross checked with the calibration cell. It is showing around 3.1 here in the calibration display reading. And the gauge pressure PG is showing around okay further to 3, it is 2 readings for ahead of 3. That means to say 3.4 kg per centimeter square. Each division 0.2 kg per centimeter square. Beyond 3, there are 2 divisions, it is the pointer, okay, pointing towards that means to say it is 3.4 and the calibration rating is 3.1. So keep okay in mind about the loading condition. So now we have to unload, that means to say it is, okay, anti-clockwise is the unloading method. Don't keep always the system pressure loaded and remove the weight. We have to unload the weight. Okay, once you unload and remove the pressure, then you have to remove the weight. Okay, totally system is unloaded, pressure readings are zero. So now it is the right time to remove the load from the loading platform. So this is how the experiment should be conducted with the two readings here. So this reading is load P, P, G and this is P, P, C. That means to say it is calibration per cell. So we have seen two trials. Okay, in the following next session I will show you the calculation part and result part of the pressure gauge reading. Thank you. So we have conducted the calibration of pressure gauge experiments uh, with the following readings. You can focus on the work. Uh, tabular column, calculations and the calibration graph result and comment. So quickly we will uh, round up all the okay, mentioned uh, parameters on the board. So this goes through the tabular column. It consists of serial number, applied pressure, what we applied there with the uh, gauge pressure and indicated pressure, what was the calibration shown on the display, electronic display, calibration of pressure cell and then error that is Pg minus Pc in terms of kg per centimeter square, which is a unit what we measure the pressure and the percentage error. So it is difference between Pg and Pc by Pc into 100. Okay. So we started with the weight of 2 kg, uh, the applied pressure was 2.4, indicated what the electronic okay, display setup gave us a reading pressure cell was 2.2, uh, the difference will give us the error of 0.2. And when we okay, use the formula here, you can see difference is 0.2 in the calculation. If you apply the formula, substitute the values of 2.4 and 2.2 divide by 2.4 into 100, that gives you a percentage of 8.33. So that is the percentage error what we get in the act of calibrating the pressure gauge for the weight of 3 kg applied in the help of hydraulic oil okay, in the pressure gauge setup. The second reading was also measured for 3 kg. Uh, the applied pressure was 3.4 and the indicated pressure was 3.1. Difference between these two readings is around 0.3. And uh, with the help of percentage error formula, if we substitute, we get around 8.82. One trial calculation is shown here so that it facilitates the okay, readings to be filled in the tab of power. So, keeping these two readings, say PG and PC, we have to plot a calibration graph. Okay, PG, Y axis and PC. 
is the x-axis. Take the scale of since the weights are less than 3 kg, 2 and 3 kg, I have taken scale. 1 centimeter is 1 kg per centimeter square, both on the x and y axis. Okay. So I have marked the values of 2.4 and 2.2 here. You can see PG is 2.2, PC is 2.4, it comes nearly here on the calibration curve and 3.2, 3.1 and 3.4 approximately here in the calibration curve joining to the linear line from the origin. So the line the calibration curve gives us the understanding that more the linear is the curve, more calibrated is the instrument, more authentic the reading or the measurement carried out by the instrument. For a lighter deflection, that means to say because we have got error here, there is a lighter deflection of okay, the linear line coinciding the okay, measuring instrument. So that draws the result from the calibration curve. So our aim was to calibrate the pressure gauge. So we have calibrated the pressure gauge and required calibration curve is plotted. This was our aim so which we have achieved. But majorly the act of calibration needs a comment because uh, I am inspecting an instrument or a gauge so I have to give my input with the help of percentage error if it is zero then that shows there is no error and the instrument is working precisely and accurately. Since there is a small amount of error that means to say pressure gauge requires further calibration so we have to calibrate the instrument so that our pressure gauge what we are employing to measure the pressure should is not giving a sufficient amount of Okay, authentic or precise reading, it is given a small amount of error if we further calibrate it so that the pressure gauge functions accurately. So that is a comment which an engineer can give uh, by conducting the entire experiment of calibration.